What's up everyone, Havoc here. It's been a while since I made a video about the problems with the Elgato capture devices, so let's jump right into the most common issues people have. These mostly consist of issues with getting the proper audio and video, along with issues with OBS not recognizing your device or having stuttering or lagging in your preview windows on the PC. So let's get started with video. So what we see mostly is stuttering, lagging, and latency issues. These are some of the major issues people have, so what are the steps we can take to fix this? First, you want to make sure your data is being stored to a solid state drive, since solid state drives are faster than hard disk drives. But you need to also double check to see if you have enough space on your solid state drive. You can also use a hard disk drive, but that just slows things down. Next, you want to run the software as an admin. So come up to the OBS Studio, right click it, and then click run as administrator. So mine is already open, I'm just going to open it here. Next, you can go to the settings on the bottom right, and click advanced and then change the process priority to high. I think default is at normal, but you can change it to high. Another thing you can do is go to output and then check the settings here. I have mine left at mostly the default because I haven't had any issues since I fixed everything. So in the simple menu up here, you can go down to recording and then check the quality. So at recording, you can check the quality and leave it at high. If you have it at distinguishable or lossless, that's going to put a lot of strain on your PC and just slow things down, unless you have a really powerful rig. For the format, you can leave this at MKV or MP4, whatever you want to work with. Now, this is going to be important. For the encoder, you want to make sure that you're using the hardware and not the software. So pick the H.264 as your encoder. And for audio, you can just leave it at the default as is. If you're still not having the video working appropriately, you can tinker with the advanced settings. Once you click it, you're going to go to the recording tab and then scroll down to the encoder settings. Here you can change the rate control. I've left mine at CBR and you can increase the bitrate if you want. I think it starts off at around 2000 kbps and you can go higher and see if that helps. Leave the preset at P4 or P5 and where it says tuning, here's where you can choose quality over latency if that's one of the issues that you're having. Be sure to turn off look ahead and psychovisual tuning because that puts a lot of strain on your PC as well and turning those off helps tremendously. Next, we want to go to the video tab and check the base resolution. This is the resolution of your monitor. And then check the output resolution. This is what you're going to be saving the file as. The downscale filter you can leave at bicubic and then change the FPS value to 60. When you have all of that done, then let's add the video capture device and see what comes up. So you're going to hit the plus, and then you're going to select video capture device. I already have mine saved here, so I'm just going to double click mine. When the device comes up, it should say Game Capture HD60S Plus or your HD60X, whichever device you're using to capture. You don't need to mess with any of these settings. You can also leave the resolution FPS type at default. Scroll down. This is where you can change the color. I left mine at 2100 PQ just because I like the higher contrast HDR look. If you leave it at default, it kind of looks washed out to me, so I just don't like how that looks. So this is what I leave mine at. For buffering, you want to make sure this is set to auto detect. You don't want to enable or disable it, just leave it at auto detect, and that's going to give you the best video. For audio output mode, make sure while you're on this screen to leave it at capture audio only if it's not already set as that. Then you're just going to hit OK. After doing all of these, hopefully you don't have any issues with your video being laggy or stuttering, but if you do, keep on watching. Now, for audio, before you mess with the audio settings, make sure that your speakers are actually working. So put some music on or video, and if you can hear sound coming through your speakers, then we're all set. Now what you want to do is, on your video capture device, you want to go into the settings, and then you want to go to audio. And check to see if the global audio device is the same as the advanced. So over here, my speakers are the Realtek R Audio, same as here, for whatever reason, Mine switched off of these and I wasn't having appropriate audio coming through. This had set to uh, disabled and then the advanced was still at Realtek R audio. I don't know what happened, but anyway, you want to make sure that both of these are the same. Now, if you're going to be recording, this is where you're going to select what device you want to use as your microphone. If you're not using anything as a microphone, if you're just recording audio from whatever you're capturing, then just leave this as disabled. Once you do all that, click, click OK. And if you're still not having audio coming through, what you can do is on your video capture device, you want to come over, click these th three dots here, click advanced audio properties, 
And then what you can do is on the video capture device, you can click monitor and output. Right now, I think default, it normally says monitoring off, but I have mine set as monitor and output. So if I press the buttons, you can see that the video capture device is capturing the audio that's coming. And I can also hear it from my speakers. If you leave it as monitor only, then you can still hear the sound coming through your speakers, but it's not going to be recorded in your video. If you'd leave it as monitoring off, you won't be able to hear the sound coming through your speakers, but it will be recorded in your video. So hopefully that resolved your audio issues. Now, last few things to try to get the Elgato working is to check on the components. First things first, is your Elgato even working? Does it turn on and show a white light on startup or is the light always red? If it's a red light, then that means you have a recording issue. Or if it's a white light, but you're not having proper video displaying, then it's a power issue. So let's look at the HDMI first. Make sure that you have tried with using different cables. Sometimes the cables can be damaged and you won't even realize it. The best way to check if it's working is obviously try it with another device. You can also plug it into your Xbox or PS5 and check if the resolution is able to go up to 4K or 2K, whatever your cable supports. Not all HDMI cables are the same. They vary in what type of data they are able to transmit. Next, check that the USB cable you're using to power your Elgato is the correct one. This was the main issue for me. And I didn't realize this because I was using OBS and my video was just super choppy. So I decided to try the Elgato 4K capture utility software to see if maybe OBS was the problem. And then when I booted that up, it said USB 3 is required for this device. So here I'm thinking that Maybe my PC has a bad USB port. So I switched my cable to multiple different USB 3.0 ports on my PC and I kept getting the same error that USB 3 is required for this device. I even tried using another USB A to C cable and I still had the same problem. Then I thought to myself, you know what? Let me just try another cable that I have upstairs. So I went and got it as a last ditch effort and voila, it worked. So it turned out that I had to use a specific USB A 3.0 to USB C cable and the Elgato actually comes with one and I had completely forgotten about that. But I think any USB 3.0 to C will work fine. And I didn't even realize it at the time. But I was just using a regular USB A to C cable. Like the one that comes with your Xbox Pro controller. Which was causing my video recording to look like crap in the preview with all the lagging and jitteriness. So anyway, I hope all these tips are able to help you get to where you need your software to be. And so that you can record your videos appropriately. And that's all I've got for you guys. Hopefully this resolves some of your issues. Thanks for watching. Havoc out.